name is Shub de Kanter. I'm a lecturer at the University of Applied Sciences in Utrecht. Uh, I teach meeting design and also uh, lateral thinking and creative thinking. And next to my job at the university, I'm also having my own uh, organization and I'm a facilitator, a trainer, an inspirator and a co-creator. So uh, this is uh, the first time that I host this online session and uh, I'm very uh, excited about that. I uh, learned a lot from a session I uh, followed from mischief makers. So maybe there's some mischief makers in the house. Um, uh, and if you want to join this, uh, Elina will put a link later on in the chat so that you can uh, learn to host like a pro and design uh, prep for success. So if you want to learn more about this, uh, my keynote is just a little spark and a little uh, uh, 40 minutes designing online stuff. Next to meeting designer, I'm also a learning designer. And in learning design, it's common to use arches for your uh, lessons and your courses. So if you have a whole curriculum, you have the big arch. And if uh, every single uh, learning activity is an arch itself. So if you have one lesson or one day or one week, you can use an arc. And you always have to start it you explore in the middle part and you end it. So for this 40 minutes, I use only one arc, but if you make a whole curriculum or a big event, then you can use several arches. For today, we have three phases and one arc. You have always the launching phase. You have to start learning activities, meeting activities. You have the big part, the exploration phase where the, the main content is in, the main message, and you also always have to end a session so uh, that you know what the learning outcomes are, uh, if everybody understands everything that you uh, talk about the next steps. So today we follow this arch and we start with the first phase and that's the launching part. In the launching part there are two activities, two formats that you can use and that I use for this session also. And the first one is a check-in. You want to know how it is with all the participants, who is in the house. So um, that's what we will do next. And we uh, work with an I do art. So first the check-in. And um, we have a big team here, more than 25 participants. And I'm very curious what your superpowers are. So check your white paper and your black pencil and draw a little drawing about your superpower. And you can also use a word next to it if it's more hel helpful for you not to draw everything. But uh, 30 seconds to draw your superpower on the big white paper. And if you're ready, you can put your superpower in front of the camera so that we see all superpowers. Oh, great, great drawings. It's fun. Hard boxes, little suns. Don't mock us. How about our drawings? <laughs> Great. A lot of superpowers. Maybe you can also put your superpower in one word in the chat. So then have we try the chat out also. And Elina, maybe you can help me to uh, read out what the superpowers in the group are. Sure what thing. So put your superpowers in the chat and then we see a lot of great values great characteristics a lot of enthusiasm sparkles humor calmness optimism a lot of positive stuff helicopter view for murray oh that's nice thanks a lot so so this is one example how you can check in you can use the chat when everybody's coming in in the waiting room 
so that you uh, ask people who is there. You can also use uh, little uh, things that um, the topic of the day, you can introduce the topic of the day. And uh, I found out Giphy.com this week so that you can use this little uh, Giphy's in your session. So uh, I was very happy with that. So maybe that's also a good tip for you. If you don't want to check in in the chat, uh, or if you want to check in with a theme, this is also a very helpful way to check in, to use little, um, oh, sorry, I put it somewhere. Um, you, uh, you use the images in the chat, for example, with your team, what is your working place today? Where do you, where are you working? What are the tasks uh, of this day or this week? How do you feel? And do you need help? If everybody of your team texts this in uh, WhatsApp, for example, or another platform that you use, then you have a check-in very quick with everybody. And then you know how everybody is feeling and who needs help. So uh, always check in with the people uh, in your team. The next thing you can do is uh, that you make an I do art for your session. So also in the launch phase, before the launch phase, you think about how uh, that session will be. And is there someone in the audience that know I do art, what the letters means? Is there someone who wants to switch off their microphone and tell me? Nobody? Nope. I see a lot of people shaking no. <laughs> I can do it if you want. Who was talking? Tina? TK. Yeah. Yes. Tell me, what is it? I'll give you, I'll just say the words and then you elaborate, okay? Yes, that's true. That's good. All right. So for I is for intention, as far as I gather as to like why do you actually want to be together? do is the the d is for desired o is for the outcome so what do you want to get out of it a is the agenda r r um our rules and roles and t is the time excellent 10 right? points yay yes that's true and i i made an uh, in design thinking it's common use to use the i do art for a session and uh, I, the intention is, why is this happening today? And what is the driving motivation? What do you want to aim? What do you want and need of this session? Uh, uh, what is the call of, for action? The desired outcomes is what you hope to achieve in the session. And what are the tangible, achievable goals? What will the, uh, the takeaways are or the learning outcomes? So it's very helpful if you design an event online or a meeting online to do this before the session. So I make an I do art myself uh, for this session. And the first one, my intention today is to show some best practices for the flow and format of your online meeting. And uh, I'm very happy if uh, you get a technique that you can directly apply, or uh, you get also a little intro in flow and formats and two models, the arc, and a triangle later in this session. And hopefully it's in a source of inspiration for your own session. And uh, you see me doing this. So hopefully uh, my way of doing is uh, learning by doing. Uh, I uh, try things with you and uh, hopefully you can apply it directly for your own session. The agenda today, I use the arc. So uh, there's a little intro. We use the model of the arc. I launched it. We do a, a little energizer, we explore the face and we land it. There are several roles Tika mentioned. Uh, today I'm the host and Lina is my co-host, but you are also designers, future designers and future hosts. So you are there with very different roles in your head. You want to make notes, you want to be an active participant, you want to learn. So there are several roles that you fulfill in this session. We also have the online rules and the rules of thumb that you switch your microphone off and that you switch your uh, 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 camera on. So that's handy if you tell people what the rules of the day are of this 40 minutes in this example. So we have maximum 10.45 to finish this all. 
So that's my biggest challenge uh, to be in, on time. By Mischief Makers, they use the metaphor of a, of a tennis ball. Be the tennis ball in this session. If you throw a tennis ball very softly, it bounces back very softly. If you push it very hard, it comes bounce back very hard. So it, be the tennis ball. Put every effort in this session and you can get out more than if you throw it a little bit. So throw yourself in this, on this field and uh, play this game with us. Now we go to uh, the more exploration phase. So we have the check-in and the I do art, and then the real session is starting. And hosting is one of the things. And the first recommendation I have is to always ask someone to be your co-host so that that person can do the chat, for example, or can switch between screens. Um, it's very helpful and it gives you a, a it makes you more relaxed and it's uh, easier to, uh, to, to host your session. If you want to have interaction with your audience and you're not so uh, a te technical person, then you always can use the pen and paper. Uh, it's very easy, people can do it. You can give people free time, white space to work for themselves for a few minutes. So it's an easy way to uh, collaborate. In Zoom, there are several, uh, uh, Features, for example, you can go out in breaking rooms, so you can also work in, in separate rooms and come back in the whole, in the main session. At my school, I have to work with uh, Microsoft Teams that doesn't have the uh, possibility to have breakout rooms, but then you can make several agenda uh, links and you can go out the main session, go to the next one and come back. It's a little hack a little tweak uh, to get the same uh, um, possibility. You can also use calls in Zoom, uh, or you can go to an external uh, um, website, Mentimeter, for example. And what I use quite often now is mural.com. Uh, it's an uh, um, online platform. I, I will show you a screenshot later where you can work together. For example, you can brainstorm together or you can add stuff. You can walk with your cursor to a corner uh, that you prefer. So normally in offline events, I use body voting and now you can use people uh, walk with your cursor to a corner of the screen and you can do a little bit the same. Here you see a mural uh, I make for the, this session. We launch, we explore, we land, and I put in some post-it papers. You can share this uh, mural with, er with everybody in the audience and then everybody can add stuff in it. And we can share also the screen. For this session for 40 minutes, I will not do it because it takes too much time, but it's a, a, a lot of possibilities to uh, collaborate to interact with each other. But now we have sitting uh, for, very, uh, for a long time and uh, if you have a long session you always need an energizer. So my energizer for today is find a blue object in your room and put it in front of the camera and the person who is the quickest one will win a prize and the one uh, a point and the one with the most original blue object. Oh, it's great, a lot of blue objects. Not everybody. St oh, we can put a candle on. Oh, Paula, I think I prefer your one. You have the most original one. What is it? Is it for your telephone? Great, everybody succeeds. Ivo, what's your object? It was a pen, not the original. <laughs> oh, very good. Thanks a lot. So if you uh, do it this way, everybody's uh, standing up from their uh, chair, uh, uh, have to find something, put it in front of the camera. So it's an easy um, uh, energizer. Another one is that I put an object in front of the camera and everybody has to find as quick as possible the same object in their house. So. I put this one, a tea bag, in front of the camera. So who is the first one to find a tea bag also in their house? 
I see some people running away. They are quick. Yes, there's Elsa is very quick with finding another tea bag. Yes, Elina has one uh, not in a in the paper. Oh, there's a cup, the mug. <laughs> Mine even says, "What gives you energy?" <laughs> no, what gives you energy, Elina? <laughs> finding a tea bag, apparently. <laughs> okay, so everybody has moved. You can also stand up and uh, put music on, and so that everybody can dance. So. Use also energizers online. That's what is my recommendation. Elina, are there questions so far? No, none yet. You've been crystal clear. Oh, that's nice. Now I will switch to a, a, a topic meeting design because uh, I'm a meeting designer and a learning designer. And um, I will tell you something about that because the same uh, uh, elements in meeting design you can also use for an online meeting and oh, and um, this is one of my sources of inspiration it's the book into the heart of meetings basic principles of meeting design eric and mike uh, it's a it's a book full of stories about 25 years of experience about mike and eric they're also friends of mine and um we have a meeting designer practicum every year for five years now where we experiment with each other, where we uh, explore things like uh, female and male stuff in events, how, what is authenticity. And last year we uh, did uh, stuff about virtual meetings before the Corona crisis. So it was very uh, helpful, but we couldn't imagine that it was so being so uh, yeah, all around us uh, at the moment. But this book is more like a reading book. It's not a studying book. So I help my students to make a model out of it. And this is a very simple model, a triangle of meeting design. I make it myself that you have three elements that you have to combine in a meeting. And um, you always have the goals. What do you want to achieve with this session? And there's always a content you want to uh, explore or that you want to spread uh, a uh, message that you want to spread and the experience that you want people to have and if you can combine it and bring it closely together then you have a real good uh, meeting design in every corner of this um, triangle there are several um, exercises you can do by yourself or with your client, uh, it's I've too, uh, the, the time is too short today to explore every corner, but I will give you an example of another event and how they work with these three topics. So the goals, the content and the experience. And I um, maybe uh, we can ask this first. In the top corner, the goal of a session, um, maybe you can write it in the chat. What is the goal of your next online meeting? What do you want to achieve? And then we can look what the content has to be and, uh, um, and the experience. So write down in the chat. So the first one is Elina receiving feedback from peers. Mm -hmm. Are there other goals? Uh, Leonie, you are uh, privately chatting with me. You can also use the button that everybody can see your answer. So connection with participants, networking, understanding and skill and self-management, solutions to the audience, receiving feedback, get more donors. Yes, that's difficult in this, these times. Sharing research experiences. So it's very helpful and maybe you can use this I do art also for your session. What is the goal? What is the desired outcome when, 
when are you happy uh, with your session? So that's one of the uh, uh, main things you, you always have to start with tangible uh, objectives with uh, smart goals. A lot of informed colleagues about the new strategy is one of the goals, sharing particular. So most of the people have answered right now. So I will show you an example. And it's about a um, European meeting and event conference. The European meeting and event conference is a big conference, four days long. Uh, and last year it was held in the Netherlands, in The Hague. And one of the main uh, goals of this meeting is that they want to network with uh, people from all over the world. And they come up with a very nice solution to uh, achieve that goal. And um, Sorry, the, uh, Leonie, you... Uh, you have problems with the screen. What are you seeing? Yeah, I unmuted. See you may or see you the sheets or see you the chat. What are you seeing? Elina, maybe you can help her uh, switching between her screens. Then I. Uh, let me Go see. Further with my story because otherwise I have too <laughs> less time. So in uh, the AMEC networking was very important, and one of the things they designed was that people from other countries uh, were taxied by uh, local delegates. So they went to Schiphol and uh, asked people to join them in their car, and they drive together to uh, the venue. Another great example was that they. Of the first evening, they used food trucks, but you could only uh, order food if you did the assignment right. For example, when people from three different countries or uh, that with the same favorite color or um, that you, are, uh, you uh, order in fluent French. Now, this is an offline example, but you can do the same in an online environment. You can also make subgroups with these topics, or you can combine people from different countries, or you can ask people to put an object in front of the camera, and all the people with green are working together, or all the people with red are working together. So this was one of the examples where the goal networking, one of the solutions for uh, the goal networking. And there was another uh, great way to interact, and that was here in the, the lowest uh, part of the screen. It was a big ex escape room, an escape exercise. We were locked in the Fokker terminal, and there were white and black boxes with assignments in it. And we have to make groups of three or two uh, people and do the assignments. And if you did the assignments right, you get a letter and a number. And that was a coordinate, and there was a, on the floor, there was a, a little a squares, and you have to put your box on the right spot, and then it became a big QR code, and that was our escape. So everybody has to work together, and there were several assignments about the other people in the audience, for example, memory. You have to find out whose picture belongs to which uh, name. And so we worked together and the box, you could place the box on the floor and then um, there was the QR code and everybody can go out. This is also an example how you have to network, you have to combine all the information from different people and you can also make this offline, of, uh, uh, online and to do assignments, uh, to work together, to collaborate in different groups and to combine it to a big, big uh, solution. And the upper part, you see me in a different setting, uh, like uh, this way. <laughs> uh, it was about designing for introverts. How can you make an event more suitable for introverted people? And today with the online stuff, 
uh, I think this kind of sessions are more suitable for introverted people because it's about turn taking. Everybody uh, answer after each other. You have to be very focused. Um, but the tips that are uh, that I give that day is also uh, suitable for today. Um, because introverted people want to know who the others are in the audience because they want to prepare well. And you can do it online also. You can have the uh, share the content before or the question before. And um, one of the tips if you have introverted people in your surrounding is not to ask people for their opinion, but ask them what they are thinking. So if you ask uh, an introvert their opinion, they say, who am I? Who? I don't have an opinion yet. I have to rethink it. I have need more time. I want to ask uh, Maria about it and we don't have to forget the past. And then <laughs> it doesn't work anymore. But if you ask an introvert, what are you thinking at this moment? Then he said, okay, it's a nice question. Maybe we have to ask Maria and we, we have to think about the past. And, um, and then, this person can show all his thoughts or her thoughts and can contribute very well. So um, the online session is maybe more suitable for introverted. I want to test that uh, later. So if you look at the iMac and the, oh, the last photo is about the choir. It was very nice. Everybody, they sing, this is the greatest show. And uh, this guy in the front starts singing and all, the audience was on the stage uh to make them feel more important and you walk through the choir to your sub session so it was a very intense feeling and um and so you see that that they designed it very well they used their goals and the experience was very intense you get a lot of opportunities to choose and you can also do that online and choose different sub sessions and um uh, so if you look at the triangle in this model, then the goal was networking and the several examples were uh, uh, things, sorry, I was too quick, uh, about the experience. So the taxi from Schiphol, the food trucks with the assignments, the big escape room assignments, design for introverts and the choir and a lot of more stuff. This is also a um, Bea winning event. So there are a lot of movies about this event because they were very effective in their uh, arranging their goals. And they worked with volunteers most of the time. They had very lot of uh, 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 47 venues, I thought. So um, it was very nice to be a part of this uh, event. So then about the um, meeting design. So think about your goals, your content and the experience you want to achieve. And then for every challenge, there's a solution. If you want to interact online with your audience in the, in the main part of uh, the session, then there are several things you can do. You can use images, the chat like we do now, the rule of thumbs, you can use polls, you can people ask people to speak up and use their microphone. You can also use the gallery mo gallery view so that you can see everybody. You can put it, um, if you go to the bar above your images, then you see several squares. If you click on that, then you see everybody. Um, you can go and have breakout rooms. In Zoom, it's uh, a fixed feature, but in other systems, you have to find out uh, and uh, tweak it. Like in MS Teams, uh, what I said, you can make several agendas next to each other. You can collaborate in Google uh, Docs, uh, share uh, Word documents, and for example, the mural I show you, and black, uh, whiteboards where you can put your answers on. So there are several uh, ways several formats you can use to interact with your audience. Are there questions so far, uh, Elina? Yeah, you've got one. When you were talking about the, the events, uh, you got a question saying, where can we find these videos? The best uh, event awards. Um, uh, 
uh, I think I can uh, get your email and I can send you this um, slide deck. So I will uh, put the, the link to the video in it so that you can uh, see the video. So I will uh, ask uh, Quirina to uh, share it with you. I got it perfect. <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> um, when you try to do things online, uh, this is my favorite quote. What if I fall? Oh, my, but my darling, what if I fly? Since 2014, I use this every day. It's in my bathroom, so I see it every day. And everybody is trying this, and it's new for ev almost everybody. So um, I've used my growth mindset and said, okay, let's do it. I host a session online, and hopefully I learn a lot about it, and hopefully you will learn a little bit from me. So um, that's what I uh, recommend you to do. Just try it, uh, find out your way, do it your, your own way. Uh, I ho hopefully I can be... Uh, 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 a flow booster and energy energizer online that was one one of my ideas when i uh, try to uh, think about online sessions it's one one of the biggest challenge i see how to get people involved how can you get them engaged and um so i try it every day uh, not to fall but to fly So what did we do? In the launch phase, we explored the check-in and the I do art. And in this main phase, I sh showed the triangle about meeting design and, we, and I show you some ways to interact with your audience and also to use energizers uh, in the middle part. So that brings us to the landing phase. And in the landing phase, there are several steps you uh, can do. Always land a session. So keep time left to land a session. And I look for myself. Yes, I have time to land the session. One of the things is that you have to summarize it. So that's why I use the arc and say, okay, in the beginning, check in. I do art in the middle part, meeting design and interactions, energizes, and in the landing phase. Um, a good finale has four uh, items in it. Always be clear about the communication. Do you get the slide deck? Can you email me? Uh, who um, is the owner of the results? I'm a brainstorm teacher also and a facilitator in brainstorming. Then it's always important who is the owner of the ideas? Can you talk about it when you, you talk with friends? Is it free or is it from is it someone is it from the company or the ideas from someone else? Um, what will the next steps be? Is this just one meeting or is this the row or is this the first step? Is it the kickoff? And uh, is there someone who has to work with their results afterwards? And it's nice if you make it more like a ritual that you design the end uh, in line with the theme of the day, with the topic of the day. For example, uh, when I did a a uh, big event about um, uh, food waste. Uh, they want to sign um, a declaration. And I said, no, that's not, not the right way. These are the great conceptual thinkers in the room, the biggest of the Netherlands. They don't write a declaration. So we had a very big uh, bin. We painted it gold and everybody signed it. And it would be the, uh, I don't know the word, potato? The what? what? <laughs> if you stand here in a, in a big conference room behind the desk, so the bin was there, the golden bin with all the autographs uh, on it, and everybody can spread in the next event behind that desk, uh, the bin desk, all their uh, outcomes. So use a way that suits the theme or um, or the topic of the day especially when you have a bigger event maybe not these 40 minutes but if you uh, have a big event then it's nice if, if pride is the topic and let people show their pride if uh, being together is the topic then show everybody the same color or a dress code uh, and make a, a group picture from the gallery view or 
And so you can make a ritual about the end. And for today, we have two uh, different ways of ending this session. And the first one, uh, we use the chat again, is can you put all the uh, things in the chat that you heard today? Which topics, which formats, which content did you hear in this 30, 40 minutes? What, what did we do? I hear I do art, energizes and I do art. A triangle, yes. Learning curves, great, a QR code. Mural. An escape room, yes. Oh, this escape room was um, uh, built by Sherlock. I, I write it down, I will share it with you too. Rules for interaction, what if you fly, thumb rules, great. Introvert people, I can tell a lot about that. If you want to mo know more about that, maybe I can do a, an extra session on that topic because it's very nice. You can do more than you think. Thank you for this uh, giving this back to me because they were the main topics uh, of my session. So uh, it's helpful to see that you pick it out of it. <laughs> um, and um, the last question I want to check out with is, can you put a word that suits your feelings at the moment? What is the word that suits this session for you? What is coming up in your mind? Nice words, curiosity, inspired, new ideas, opportunities, great, new ideas, energy. Growing, addition to plans, informative, new, short. Yes, it's too short. Mm -hmm. um, Elina, maybe you can uh, put the link of the learning arcs also in the chat or the several links I emailed you? Yeah, the link of the learning arc. I'll go find because it. Because the first picture about the big learning arc and the little ones is from Chaos Pilot, and they have a very nice publication on LinkedIn. Um, I will share the link uh, in, the, in the chat, and otherwise I will put it in my slide desk. Um, that, sorry. Because uh, in this uh, article, there are several cross-links about templates you can use, about how you can build it. So if you want to see your event more like a learning activity, then you can use these arcs very well. And um, it helped me a lot, uh, this article. So I will share it with you. Um, Yes, uh, th there's also one thing, the, the location of, an, uh, of a session normally uh, uh, is important. Um, I, sorry, I go back. I missed a slide, sorry. I missed this slide, so I go uh, back a little because this is my these are my four leading principles when I design an event, and I want to share it with you. Always, the human beings are always central in your event, so you always work for delegates, uh, and if you work for an internal organization, you always have to think about what is the task or the role that these people have in your event. For example, are there the the people from your own company? A big choir that are singing in the event or are they uh, hosts or uh, do they draw or just give them a role in the event the second one i think there ha always has to be an interaction between people 
So you have to design the interaction. What is the working format? Uh, is it in duos? Is it in groups? Is it with everybody together? Then the meeting design, that's the triangle I talk about, always bringing the goal, the content and experience together. And the physical surrounding is in, important. So if you have an offline event, you have the location that tells the venue message, how you have to behave in this place and the setting of the room. And today this screen is our location. So you can all also be, uh, it's, it's dif different and difficult maybe, but you can also think about how have people, uh, how do you want them to sit or do they have to stand or uh, do they have uh, a dress code, for example, to, to have a nice summer feeling. Everybody uh, take your most summer uh, dress today uh, and bring it to this event. So also the physical environment, uh, for example, uh, Marcella has plants behind her. That's a different atmosphere. You can also choose a background. All my uh, colleagues are choosing funny backgrounds when they uh, are in MS Teams. So it's possible to do to work with that. But these four elements, I think, are crucial in a good design, in a good event design. So uh, that was an extra incoming uh, little bit of content. Thank you for uh, sharing all uh, the words uh, uh, in the chat and uh, what you think, uh, what you found uh, the most suitable word for this session. Are there questions? Because we have uh, zero minutes left. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I want to switch to the last. And next week, I still uh, I also have a session on Mar uh, April twenty fourth about creativity because I'm also a lateral thinking a trainer. It's about uh, uh, brainstorming and how you can use your creativity more and which are the creative uh, um, characteristics of a person to learn to associate, uh, uh, make mistakes, uh, dare to fly. <laughs> so if you uh, like it, then there's another session. It's about 11 o'clock. And if you have more questions, you can email me, you can uh, call me. Uh, and. Uh, Thank you for joining this session and hopefully it was uh, worthwhile.